I'm joined now by Mora Chowdhury. He is head of business treasury, global banking and markets at Royal Bank of Scotland. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, if we look at Ireland, Ireland was the the poster boy uh, for austerity when it got into trouble, having been uh, the Celtic tiger. Um, Ireland was also in very good shape when it went into the EU. So whatever you say about Greece uh, and arguments that Greece maybe shouldn't have been there in the first place, Ireland certainly should. And yet, if Ireland can get into this mess, um, what does it say about the rest of not only the peripheral nations in Europe, but the EU as a whole? Yeah, absolutely right. We're probably seeing either end of the spectrum of the fault lines mm. in the Euro project, the mm. great Euro project, which we should always remember is a political construct more than an economic one. It's all about ever closer union. But Professor Milton Friedman put it best uh, before he passed away about the problems when you have a monetary union without fiscal union. Yeah. And we're seeing this come through now. So what the problems in the Euro, and Anatol Kalecki put it succinctly and spot on today in the Times, you know, when he said, here we go again, the problems in the Euro won't go away with patching over one country to the next. The contagion factor is what's affecting markets right now. And the entire southern and peripheral eurozone is, is it's almost open season. So it's about the fault lines in the construction, the strategy behind the, the, the structure of the euro that, me, that is being questioned by the markets today. And while that might be papered over for the next two, three, four, might be even ten years, in the long run, it's, it's not sustainable because something's got to give. So on that fiscal side, that's something the EU needs to address. And we've got that, uh, that lack of uh, fiscal coherence. But also the fact that these are sovereign nations makes it fairly difficult. I mean, if part of, of England had to have, some, have a, a painful economic time for the greater good of the United Kingdom, that might be more acceptable. It's very difficult to persuade the Irish people, I mean, this is about people's lives and the money in their pockets and the way they live their lives, that they should take some fiscal pain for the greater good of the Germans and the French. And one can understand that. Mm. I mean, these were the arguments that were being forwarded by people prior to the Euro project who were saying one shouldn't join, you know, for example, the UK shouldn't for sure. just this reason. And so where you have these kind of fault lines, where you have sovereign nations that, uh, for example, have runaway budgets in some cases or fall into a boom followed by a bust, the Euro will suffer as a result. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, it's, it's an issue that will be addressed, that needs to be addressed because otherwise investors are going to be testing the markets all the time. Indeed. It'll be almost like a permanent crisis for, m for many countries in the Eurozone. And even if uh, Ireland gets uh, solved with some sticking plasters at the moment, because Ireland and Greece were both completely different and yet the, the, the speculators have tested them both, the markets have tested them both, is there any reason to assume that it will stop there and that Portugal or indeed Spain or indeed France will be next? Well, possibly in the short term, but not over the shorter to medium term, no. Mm -hmm. I think every country that has a budget problem mm -hmm. and, and, or an economic uh, crash of some sort mm -hmm. will come under the same sort of pressure. I mean, you're right, your, your summary at the start was correct, to be fair to the Irish economy, that they had instituted uh, budget restructuring you know, before asking for aid. In fact, they're not asking for aid at the moment. This, mm -hmm. is, this is a wider political issue, I think. But over time, any country that is viewed as suspect in with regards to its fiscal management will see its bond spreads come under its bond yields come under pressure in the markets so no this isn't going away it, it'll be papered over from time to time you know like in may with the greek bailout which yes. was seen as euro wide the eu bailout package is euro wide but uh, over time you know that's going to affect a lot of countries that aren't in control of their budgets in the way that they should be mr chowdhury thank you very much indeed for joining us with your insights today